And if you're looking for advice on, on how, to, how to do this back to the land thing, I recommend you read those folks um, as far as reading me. <laughs> if you're looking for what to avoid, I mean, I'm kind of your guy. Um, <laughs> and I don't claim to have any great insight, but I will say that there are a few little niches of the rural life that King Solver, Paulin, Salton, are, those, those folks are missing, they've overlooked. And I've taken it upon myself <laughs> to try and educate folks in, in that regard. And this is just an excerpt that does exactly that. This is just one of those little skills that they don't tell you about when you move back to the country. Uh, and it takes place on a morning when it was about 10 or 20 below and I was out splitting firewood. This morning, while splitting wood, I attempted to clear my left nostril using a rustic maneuver known as the farmer snort. <laughs> and misfired badly. <laughs> my eustachian tubes have yet to assume their former diameter. <laughs> I bubble gummed an eardrum, shot fizz out both tear ducts, and may have permanently everted one eyeball. <laughs> I believe I sprained my uvula. <laughs> the act of blowing one's nose without benefit of Kleenex is a skill appreciated along a wide spectrum of background and endeavor. Synonymous terms include fisherman's tissue and air hanky. <laughs> and another even better one that my New York editor would not let me keep in there, <laughs> snot rocket. <laughs> She has certain sensibilities, and <laughs> apparently that crossed the line. <laughs> but I grew up calling it a farmer snort, because them's my people, and them's who taught me. The lessons were not formal. Watch and learn, learn by doing. Same way I learned to spit. Although Dad nearly derailed me there. We was walking from Oliver Balrood's barn to the house for a lemonade break between unloading hay wagons when I puckered up and gobbed a stringer down my miniature bib overalls. <laughs> I'd been watching Oliver all day. He was a diminutive Norwegian and an accomplished spitter. Not big tobacco-y streamers, just frothy little pips. But he did it constantly and the flex flew sharp and straight. Gosh, it was just the neatest thing. <laughs> he could do it while talking, pitchforking, or backing up the tractor. I wasn't even in kindergarten yet, but I was trying to march beside my dad like a little haymaking man, and I guess I figured spitting would be the thing. When I goobered on my bibs, <laughs> dad didn't even break stride. He just looked down and said, don't spit until you know how. <laughs> Boy, that set up a conundrum. <laughs> how are you going to learn if you can't do? I guess I got around it. Later, when I lost my milk teeth, the new set came in with a pretty good gap. <laughs> This helps with the aiming and has a rifling effect. Given a gift, you work with it. I can sit in the kitchen and knock a horsefly off your doorknob. Executed smartly, the farmer snort is a source of transcendent clarification. In short, it really lightens your head, and consequently your day. Conversely, a snort misplayed can put a serious crimp in your karma. As with most things in life, your odds of success improve through focus and rehearsal. Determine your dominant nostril. Visualize success. 
think through the snort. <laughs> that sort of thing. I have encountered people who claim to be able to perform a hands-free double barrel farmer snort. <laughs> I am skeptical and not about to hang around while they prove it. <laughs> the first time I saw my wife farmer snort, <laughs> I felt a renewed flush of affection. <laughs> And I thought, now there is a woman who can endure. <laughs> so, just filling in the gaps there for King Solver and Paulin. Um, 